Hi, I'm Barry John, and welcome back to Let's Play Descent 2. It's the final level, and we have an amazing start. I have both co-pilots, and I'll let them introduce themselves as well. Hi, it's Laylight, here again. Hey, it's Solitaire, ready to see this thing out once and for all. Yep, I was wrong. This is actually both the final world and the final level. Yep. So, welcome to Tycho Brahe. And there's the exit. Joy. Hmm. Nice. Uh, Tycho Brahe. <laughs> Tycho Brahe, last level. You're, uh, you're uploading, you're starting with an Omega Cannon. Yep, because all of these evasive guys just... It's better to use the Omega Cannon on them. Yeah, I guess this is a case where, uh, like... The Gauss Cannon doesn't cover enough area, and the uh, quad lasers are too slow. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I'm still fighting my bad uh, joystick at this time, so it's... Well, hey, at least you managed see... to pick up a uh, an upgraded headset. It was just floating in the air, and you rammed into it to upgrade it. Yeah, that's true, but uh, yeah, for those of you who don't pay attention to the thread on something awful. I've been fighting with my joystick and the headset for a while now, and the headset finally gave out, and the joystick is given out too, but I've got enough of a backlog for a few levels. So now so. you just have to find a robot to blow that up that'll give you a new joystick. <laughs> That's true. Hmm. Yeah, I wish I could have a new headset. I like I like something wireless because I I move around uh, so much. I I move around the room uh, often enough that it's just and, uh, pausing or bringing my laptop with me or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's the I trouble with that. uh growing up is once you finally have the money that you can just spend on whatever you want suddenly you're responsible for evaluating whether stuff is a good buy or not. You just can't win. No. Looks like you're certainly getting uh, plenty of pickups in this level, though. They want to make sure that you never run out of ammo. Oh, no. Like, yeah, they they jump you straight to the... Uh, they jump you straight to the super lasers. They don't give you normal lasers on this level. Also, the map for Tycho Brahe... Does anybody else see a theme for it? It's, it's a cage around the boss arena. Yep. I mean, we saw that red That's... door right at the start. And it's the final level of the game, so presumably there's a final boss lurking in there. Mm-hmm. Of course, as with all descent levels, it's getting to the boss. That's the real fun challenge. Yeah, I Whereas mean, on the one the side, itself. the fact that you have all these curving hallways means it's not too hard to dodge all this homing stuff if you can run away fast enough. But at the same time, all these mines are making it hard to run around at a fast speed. So there's your tension there. Meanwhile, the boss Sorry. seems like a less fun challenge. Uh, well, a little bit, yeah. You're going to see me aggressively save and reload in this level because, well... I want the Earth Shakers. I want to maximize my amount of Earth Shakers I use in this fight. And if I die, I lose half my Earth Shakers. That stinks. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, it kind of feels like the developers are expecting you to do that kind of thing, since it's just so easily bound to a hotkey. Mm-hmm. Also, me annoyed that, you know, these enemies are running through their own smart minds, and... You know, they're not triggering any of them. But yeah, for at least for the time being, the uh, tight quarters almost seem to be favoring you more than the enemy, because uh, with these ring structures, the enemies can't really sneak up on you. All they can do is surprise you. That's true. Also, you know, unique soundtrack for this level. Okay, now something's about to go down in here, though, I'm sure. 
What, something go wrong in a descent level? Goddamn stupid joystick. Of course, the best part is I don't have to come up here. There's, you know, there's, there's the, oh wait, never mind. There is the key. I thought for a second there that the key wasn't up this way, but apparently it is. I don't use the Mercury missiles enough in this game. Yeah, they certainly seem to be giving you plenty of them, and they pack a punch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, they're pretty good missiles. It's just, you know, there's a room full of them right here, and I'm still using homing missiles. Well, I guess it's just that their explosion isn't large enough. Like, the damage is there, but, like, it's it's more impersonal if it's not, like, a huge graphical effect with a big boom and green stuff flying all over the screen. It's very true. I mean, even the uh, Mega Missiles, they've got, like, that, uh, that huge uh, red wave to them, at least, so at least they're visually impressive, even if uh, the damage isn't quite all that in the late part of this endgame. No. And honestly, we're going to be seeing the Earthshaker sort of soon, because I kind of panic fire it when I get around to it. Oh. Well, use Not them good. or lose them. Mm-hmm. Oh, those guys. I haven't seen those flash missile guys in a while. No. But yeah, but in a game like... so much about being aware of threats, all of a sudden these early game enemies are so much more dangerous than they were before. Yeah. But at least the homing missile guys are a little bit easier to deal with than they were in the last game. Wait, never mind. Well, I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit silly about betting that you were going to end the game with uh, 30 uh, lives if you're just going to reload every time you blow up. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. Once I get to the end boss, there, it, it, it's no reloading time. Every death counts. Okay. Let's see how that turns out. seem to have uh, cleaned up this place pretty well, at least. Your damage is pretty solid. Yep. Missiles. Missiles as far as the eye can see. Both in your hands and in the enemies. Very true, but just need to grab that. And then... Screw it, I'm out of here. I don't need to kill every enemy in this game. Yeah, that invulnerability is way too important to take now. We gotta save that. Mm-hmm. But uh, right now it's just backtracking to the yellow door and me trying to figure this out. No, I I have to come back to those later because I can't get at them from this side. Yeah, so this uh, this level is quite a hassle, especially if you play it on a higher difficulty where things that would normally be uh, chip damage just turn into just lethal uh, wounds from all corners. But it's definitely designed to wear you down before you even get to the boss. That's true of a lot of things. Sorry, just I like I like that whistling chorus to this particular track. Yeah, so to kind of tie back into some earlier discussions, I think this world is perhaps like the greatest argument why the, the previous few worlds and at this level aren't really biologically themed. Because there's so much, uh, like, ring structure and mechanical structure to this whole thing that it isn't really biological at all. 
Kind of looks like a combustion engine if you look at it on the map. It looks like it was carved out of jade. That's an interesting way of putting it, but uniquely among all levels, this is one we're going to see from the outside in the closing cutscene, so... There doesn't seem to be a thief bot in this level yet either, at least I haven't heard of it. No, there is no thief bot in this level. I mean, good thing too, because we wouldn't have to would not want to deal with him and the boss at the same time. No. Or have the uh or have him just steal and or delete your Earthshaker missiles either, for that matter. Yeah. How long has it been since there was a thief bot? I I don't remember. I, the last time we did a recording session was like a month ago. Oh right. Ah, the ravages of hyperspace and, uh, you know, cryosleep. Yeah, look at that. Sorry, I just meet. That doesn't look like a red blood cell or a heart to me. It looks like more like, a some kind of flux capacitor, maybe. Look. This guy can go pretty fast, the, ver the vertigo, sorry, the pyro can go pretty fast, but I don't think he can go 88 miles an hour. Okay, well this room's jam-packed, so we're gonna have to think of something a little bit more clever to lure enemies out or uh, find a critical spot where we can defend ourselves at. Mm-hmm. Or just, you know, hey, past me, time to use the Mega Missiles. Oh yeah, wide area of effect in a relatively small room. Yeah, I could see that working. Or just, you know, use Smart Missiles. Or the Phoenix because, Cannon, you know, just fire that in there and it'll probably hit something. Uh... I mean, you seem to be chipping them down, but, uh, I don't know where else they're all coming from in there. There is a, there is a small spawn point in there. Uh, you may have caught a glance of it when I was in there last time, before I had to reload, but it's that lift between the two, uh, spikes in the room. That's an enemy spawner. Oh, jeez, looks like you caught two of those concussion missiles space on there. Yeah. I don't even know where that guy came from. Probably like halfway across the level. And you just heard what was going on over here. He's like, hey Barry John, what's up? Oh, there we go. I don't know what else you killed with that, but you definitely killed that single Hilming Hulk with that. Yeah. Oh. Jeez, playing this one a little close, aren't you? And me panicking because, wait a second, I'm on guide. I'm using guided missiles right now? What? What? No, you must have run out of the homing missiles. No, you got plenty of them. I don't know what was up with that. Must have run out of something else. Yeah, there. That's a yeah. sneaky place to put a spawner. That's not easy to see. Not a lot of texture going on there. No. Seems to have run out of enemies for the time being, though. Yeah, you can even see the little purple spawn zone on the map there. But uh, this is me trying to get through there. Unfortunately, hitting that particular secret switch doesn't allow me access to that area because that's a, a backdoor area to the boss fight. Speaking of, I think it's time to recharge because I've only got three shields going into the boss fight. Oh, that's... you're cutting it pretty close there. Oh, I expect to die lots of times. But actually, even with three shields, 
There's an invincibility power-up I've been saving. Let's go grab that. So we've seen how other bosses work in this game. How could this guy be any worse than what we've already seen? Well, that's easy. For starters, this boss does the usual cloaking invisibility teleport thing. However, this boss has only one weapon, and it fires off Earthshaker missiles, too. That seems kind of hard to dodge. It is very hard to dodge. No, but here's the th real trick to this enemy. Uh, this guy only has a weak point on it. That is to say, you can only damage the boss by hitting the uh, triangular-shaped glowing weak point on its back. Which is why the Earthshaker missiles are so good, because you fire them off and they miss, and then they launch seeking uh, tar seeking stuff. So what you do wind up doing is you wind up uh, firing past the enemy, it hits them, or hits the wall behind it, and then it goes and hits the, uh, all the seeking points hit that glowing green thing on the back. Yeah, you can see that he's turning to face you, and it's... It's not super fast, but it's definitely fast enough that you can't just casually get behind this guy's back. You have to really work at it. Yeah, very true. So, fortunately, there's actually... You're seeing me do the recommended way here, which is basically run and gun and use the Earth Shakers to uh, whittle at him from behind. But Earth Shakers you can run out of. And this is me just going, okay, there should be more Earth Shakers around here somewhere. Yeah, you've only got a, like a, a time limit, essentially. Like, up till your invincibility runs out before you're basically hosed. Because, um, you can technically dodge the Earthshaker missiles, but the way that they home and the amount of other nonsense that's going on in this arena, you'll probably die in like two or three seconds after you run out of invulnerability, almost no matter what you do. Mm hmm But fortunately there is... Oh, and you can hear the... You heard the, uh, see, oh, the homing part. This is like, that was the homing missile from my enemy, from it, uh, sorry, untangle my tongue there. You could hear the homing alarm for the seeking portion of the earth shaker from the enemy come through there. Yeah, because the thing is, even the, the little bomblets, the smaller homing parts of the earth shaker still have a pretty large amount of damage and a large blast radius, so they'll just corner you unless you're out of the room entirely. Mm -hmm. So this guy is mostly just kind of a resource uh, spending check at the end of the game. Like, do you have enough Earthshaker, Mega, Smart, uh, you know, stuff to throw at him? Do you have enough lives? Do you have enough cloaking and invisibility? Thankfully, he still respects cloak, so as long as you don't alert him, he won't fire at you, but... Uh, well, it's entirely possible to just run out of stuff if you don't do enough damage to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he has more health on higher difficulties, too. He does. But no, the real thing is that... Oh, there we go. You can see the green glowy bit there. And I took a Mega Miss Earthshaker to the face. Uh, what was I going to say there? Oh, yeah. You may have noticed that oh, yeah. I... I uh, missed a, uh, a door, a secret door that closed there. That's because that's a one-time use only door to get to a pair of, uh, oh, to get to a pair of uh, Earth Shakers. That might help. Mm -hmm. But at this point, really, there's only one thing I can do, and that is, well, cloak and just run rings around this guy. It doesn't help that even if you do dodge the Earthshaker missiles, the uh, the huge amount of screen shake like makes it really hard to aim at this guy too. Like mm -hmm. you can see a lot of those you... Felix cannon shots are actually just missing, even though you are pretty well as good as you can get for that kind of strategy to work. And then it doesn't Very help that true. you're so weak for your uh, run up to your to get your stuff back too. Yep. But one of the things I. Basically, my preferred way of ending this fight is to, uh... Oh, close device. And running into these guys. Uh, 
Basically how I'm going to end this fight is by just cloaking and helixing him in the rear because the helix cannon is the most damaging weapon. It's got the highest DPS. And at this point, I don't care about the energy costs because I'm just going to respawn anyways. So yeah, like once you have some experience in this game, it's not the worst boss in the world, but definitely for newer players, like this guy is designed to just chew you up and spit you out. Like I routinely just lost like 20 to 30 lives fighting this thing. It's mean. That is, ooh, you can even see another Earthshaker there hit me as I was exploding. But yeah. Basically, you've really seen all that this fight has to offer, and it's just a war of attrition at this point. Uh, what do you guys think about Descent 2 in general? I mean, we've got a couple minutes before I reach the well, end here. Uh, it feels kind of like the Doom 2 of Descent. It introduces more mid-tier enemies, it's uh, got you more weapons, it's more uh, gameplay mechanics. It's overall for the better. Um, the game design is... the level design is maybe not quite super great but it's got some memorable moments to it at least so they were you can definitely tell that they were trying yeah i really liked playing this game when i was young i though i only got uh, two thirds of the way through about so like a lot of games in the 90s it's good definitely shows improvement over the first game could still be better but they did the best they could with what they had at the time yeah I, it's hard for me to imagine going back and playing this Because Descent 2 adds a lot of stuff. I can, can and it's definitely an amazing it. engine, too. I mean, there's a lot of neat effects in this thing. Like, even putting aside all this source port stuff, the original looks pretty nice. Uh-huh. It's a big advancement over uh, Descent 1, even just for things like lighting. Yeah. And Sorry, they so give you, like, getting... again, it, not to, like, overemphasize stuff, but the new weapons. It, it turns out having new tools to blow your enemies up in new and exciting ways is fun. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad I got to see the last couple weapons good. Looks like the Omega weapon? Omega cannon. There we go. The Phoenix Cannon's moment of glory. Because I didn't have a better weapon. Yeah, yeah you've done a lot of damage oh. to him, but he's still kicking. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try that, that again. That was... <laughs> yeah, that was... That was an embarrassing sh de- God damn it! He sees you. Yeah, I don't but... think the original, like the original Earthshaker missile shot is homing, it's just kind of large. It- the original Earthshaker did have a bit of a homing, but it didn't have the same turn radius that the, uh that the actual homing missile did. Like the little bomb one. Yeah. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. He's time spinning. to run, time to run. Yeah. But I'm going to make my escape, and then there'll be the closing cutscene, and I'll see you guys all in Vertigo. Nice. consistent with any of the others I've destroyed. It's actually moving. Maintaining speed and heading just like a starship. Now, whatever this thing is, it's getting ready to blow itself to pieces. Good. Uh, 
No more. I'm done. All that's left is to go home, get my money, and sleep for the next two years. Valhalla Tower, this is Vertigo 1. I'm starting the jump pre-sequence and returning home. Acknowledged, Materia Defender. Hurry home. We have business to discuss. What? Malfunctioning? No, 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 this can't be happening. This isn't happening. Valhalla, warp drive is malfunctioning. Repeat, warp drive is malfunctioning. Abort, jump, repeat, abort, jump, I, I can't!